We've just look, been looking at what happens when two waves interact, and it's all about the path difference. So if the difference in the different path that each of the waves uh, followed, if the difference in path is equal to n times the wavelength, then you have constructive interference, or a maximum. And if the path difference is equal to n plus a half times the wavelength, then you have a minimum, or destructive interference. So now let's take a look at an example. It seems like a lot of words, but let's just read it carefully here. So you're in your house, and you're trying to listen to a radio station that has a wavelength of 2,000 meters. Now, first of all, this is not a very realistic example because a wavelength of 2,000 meters for a radio station, uh, most radio stations that we actually listen to have wavelengths of around, like, I don't know, three-ish, so maybe like three meters. This isn't very realistic, but I just did this to make it sort of easier to work with and also so the numbers work out a little bit nicer. But, I mean, you could easily do it with any value. But now your house is located between a radio tower and a mountain. That's the key thing here. So right away, then, I'm just going to draw these. So don't worry about the rest of it here. I'm just going to draw the situation. So I need to draw myself, uh, in this case right here, a radio tower. So maybe I'll draw that as, well, I guess, how do I draw a radio tower? Maybe some sort of little tower like this. And it sort of emits this image, the signal here. So I'll call it maybe R for radio tower. Well, then you also have your house. So maybe this is your house here. Ooh, trying to draw 3D. That's your house. And then I said that you have a mountains. So some sort of mountains here. So maybe the mountains are like, maybe those are some, some mountains here. That's M for mountain. So now what you're going to do is we can take a look at this. Now, we don't really know the distance from the radio station to the house. In fact, we don't care what this distance is. What we do care about, though, is what happens to the signal here. So what happens then is uh, the signal reaches your house directly. So that means, you know, from here to here, we reach some sort of signal. And also after having reflected from the mountain. So we also have a signal that goes like this. So all the way over here to the mountain, and then back to you. So that's another one. I don't know if that makes any sense, but the light here, or the radio station signal, can reach your house directly. So that's this path here. And we actually don't know what this path here is, and it turns out we don't care. But we have this distance. So here it travels all the way to the mountains, and then bounces back. We're going to assume the mountain is one straight line, though, instead. And there we go. So, if the radio signal in your house is very poor, what is the shortest distance from your house to the mountain? So here, what we mean here is we want this distance d, and this distance I'm going to say is from here to here. I'm going to say that's the distance d that I want to find here. Is that, that's distance d I want to find here. So from here to here. So what happens if your signal is very poor? Maybe we should first write down what that actually implies for us. I mean, a poor signal, I think that's the first thing here. A poor signal, well, that implies we have destructive interference. Destructive because you know, they've added up to give you a minimum. So we can say we have destructive interference. And if you remember what that means, that means that your path difference we don't know exactly how to define it yet, but that's okay. The path difference then must be equal to, and remember what we do for destructive interference, if we look back up here, for destructive interference is this one right here. It must be n plus a half times lambda. So it must be n plus a half times lambda. That's supposed to be a 2 here. So that is what we should have here. So now, if we look at this, what can we do with this? Well, the, f the shortest distance, okay, that is going to tell us that, well, first of all, um, the minimum distance will be when n equals 0. That's the smallest path difference we can have here. So the shortest distance, that's going to tell us that n must be 0, because we want the shortest distance. That's why. So if we want the shortest distance... That sort of implies that n equals 0. Therefore, your path difference must be equal to just 0 plus a half, so that's just 1 half times lambda. 
So that is what we're going to be looking at here, is something where the path difference is one-half times lambda. Now, what is lambda? Remember up here, lambda is your wavelength. It's 2,000 meters. So that means if I go back down to here, that means my path difference is going to be 2,000 divided by 2. Maybe I should say that. So 1 half times 2,000. So that means then my path difference is going to be, well, 2,000 divided by 2. So that's 1,000 meters. Now, does that mean I'm done? No, the question wasn't, what's the path difference? The question was, how far are you from the mountain? All we found is just the path difference. In other words, the difference from here to here and this path here. So we're not quite done, but we're almost done. You see what happens then, what we can say is the shortest distance from the house to the mountain. Well, we have to look at this path difference and what it really means. Now, because we don't know this distance right here, that's okay. Because we know that the difference in distances, you know, from going from here to here and from going all the way to the mountain and back, the difference is only going here and here. That's just because, see, if you go from here to here, or if you go from here all the way to the mountain and back, do you notice both of them, that you've gone from here to here? So we can essentially subtract this piece. What I'm trying to tell you then is that the difference in distance traveled is just from here to the mountain and back, which means if the, diff the distance between your house and the mountain is called D, then we could say that the path difference is just going to be D plus D. So in that case, we're going to say that the path difference then, maybe I'll write it over here. So the path difference, this is the key thing here. Well, that's just equal to 2 times D. I think that's the, that's the maybe hard part to figure out. Okay, that's just because, again, if it goes from here to here, which we don't know this distance here, we actually don't care. Because all we care about is the difference in distance that they traveled. And the difference in the different paths is just from the house to the mountain and then back again. That's the difference. So because of that, then we can say it's 2D. So we know then that 2D equals 1,000. Therefore, D equals, well, 1,000 divided by 2. So in that case, it'll be 500 meters. So that is how we solve this one. So that might have seemed a little bit complicated, but that's why I just wanted to show you an example where at least the numbers worked out nicely. It's just a matter of first figuring out about the path difference and then actually figuring out what that path difference means in terms of this drawing here and that distance. So now the next part of the question asks, uh, here I have a part B, I think, yeah. How far away from the mountain would you need to go in order to receive a strong signal? Well, strong signal implies constructive interference. That's what we want. We want constructive interference. We want a maximum. So if we want a strong signal or constructive interference, that's when the path difference must be equal to just n lambda. That's what we set up here. So constructive interference happens when the path difference is equal to n times lambda. So in our case, there we go. And the first strong signal, I mean, keep in mind, uh, we could actually make n equals 0. If we made n equals 0, then we would say the path difference is nothing. Now, the only way you could have no path distance difference is if this right here was 0. In other words, if your house was located at the mountain. That's a little bit stupid, so we'll sort of ignore that one. So because of that, we won't count n equals 0. We're going to count n equals 1. That'll happen at the first place. That's interesting to look at. So if we look at that, the path difference then equals 1 times lambda. I guess that's just 1. 1 times lambda is just lambda. And remember, lambda is 2,000. So that means then our path difference equals 2,000 meters. And that's all we needed there. But remember, like before, the path difference also equals 2D. That also equals 2 times the distance to the mountain. That's what we defined here. That We said that the path difference down here, let me just go here, the path difference was equal to 2D. So in this case, we have the same situation going on. So the path difference is still equal to 2D. So we have, I'll we'll put an arrow here. So 2D equals 2,000 meters. 
Well, then I want to get d by itself, so it's 2,000 over 2. Therefore, d equals 1,000. So that is where you should go to pick up the next signal.